Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Construction Project Management Principles and Tips. This is the holiday edition as the holidays approach. Today we're going to be talking about something I call Fezziwig Syndrome. And those of you that may not be familiar, that's from Charles Dickens, Ebenezer Scrooge. And we're going to be looking at change and innovation. So let's roll. Alright, so Fezziwig. Fezziwig failure to change syndrome. You know, if you think about Fezziwig, what do you think about in Dickens' classic? Well, Fezziwig was Dickens' old boss. He was a jovial guy, very sort of, as the picture indicates, sort of happy. He had huge parties for his employees and staff. People loved working for Fezziwig. He was great, excellent to work with and for. You could see it in the laughter and the smiles of everybody around him as depicted again in that, that excellent rendition there. Now, if we want to look at Fezziwig, though, in the actual movie, it's supposed to, he's supposed to be the antithesis of Ebenezer Scrooge. You know, Scrooge, this crotchety, mean, cheap uh, very difficult to work with, nobody want to work for them sort of person, and Fezziwig's the exact opposite. But there's some cracks in Fezziwig too, in the sense that he ends up going bankrupt. Marley and Scrooge, his old employees, take over. And there's a bit of sadness in Scrooge when they do that, but Scrooge is Scrooge at that time, and he kind of marches through it. There's a quote in there uh, that I pulled out that always, especially Alistair Sims' uh, movie from the 1950s on Ebenezer Scrooge. It's kind of the one I, I grew up with as a kid. Um, and it says, it's not just for money. This is Fezziwig talking. It's not just for money alone that one spends a lifetime building up a business. It's to preserve a way of life that one knew and loved. No, I can't see my way to selling out to the new vested interests, Mr. Jorkin. I'll have to be loyal to the old ways and die out with them if needs must. So what's he really saying with that? He's saying he doesn't want to change. Now, I don't believe that the change required him to become mean-spirited and difficult to work with. It was just it was during the Industrial Revolution. Change was everywhere during the Industrial Revolution in Dickens' time. And, you know, a lot of people were put out of business because you just kept doing things the same way until you were out of business. That kind of happened. And we see it today. We have change everywhere as well. And the construction industry has changed everywhere. So Fezziwig syndrome is this belief that I have sort of put together that things are changing. I can't change. I'm, I'm not made for change. Uh, we've always done it this way. It's good enough. It's fine. Leave it alone. Don't bother me. And that's going to get you in trouble in the long run. For some of you watching this, maybe a change, that's not an issue for you, but maybe it's an issue for your boss or one of your colleagues. I would try to figure out ways that could get them to make a shift if that's the case. If it's you, I would try to make a shift as well. I think we all are resistant to change. I've talked about this in other videos, but I, you know, this being the holiday edition, I thought I'd talk about it uh, here with the with the Scrooge side of things, because that usually resonates and it might get people thinking a little bit. Look at Scrooge himself in the actual uh, story, right? Mean, crotchety, difficult, and at the end, happy, really wanting to help others, altruistic, completely changes. So change can happen. So all of a sudden then, at the end, really, Scrooge is the antithesis of Fezziwig. He basically actually is able to change, thanks to the three spirits that visit him. Okay, so, you know, if we want to do a little bit of background here, historically, construction, our industry, is a torn industry when it comes to innovation and creativity, right? Why? Well, it's always good to try to figure out why is that. If you make a mistake, you try something different, it tends to be pretty expensive in construction, right? Like you put... you use this new innovative material and it's not all that it was supposed to be and now you have to rip it out and replace it that can get very uh, expensive also we're jumping from project to project so it's not like we're an assembly line where we've got that opportunity as easily to make you know long chain long more permanent changes that's worth that investment to upgrade things it takes a lot of time and effort to master something you know what change it happens really fast today, but at the same time, 
it's still takes a while, especially if you're really on the cutting or bleeding edge of change. You've been too premature, you know, trying to enter a marketplace with something. You know, if you want to look at Apple's Newton back in the day, it was too early, right? The technology wasn't quite there. I think the willingness of people weren't quite there. And then when the iPad came around, it was there. It was ready. It does take time. Innovative create. What we do know, though, if you are able to change, innovative and creative companies do well. Companies that kind of stick to something and don't adjust and adapt, they don't do so well. And if you look within that, innovative and creative people do well as in that kind of environment. If they're creating and innovating, you know what? If their company goes down for whatever the reason, it's not a big deal. They move to another company or they start their own business and they do well. So if you if you can keep that that healthy mindset towards that, that will be helpful. And the construction industry, as we can see by this chart that was put out by the Economist, I believe it was from McKinsey Global Institute, you can see construction hasn't fared that well when we talk about productivity improvements. Look at agriculture, look at manufacturing, look at wholesale and retail. Overall, that's everything. Other ones that haven't done so well, I think, are healthcare and things like that. But construction definitely has not really improved in that area. As the level of complexity has increased, our productivity hasn't increased with it. So what what we know, as I said, is getting companies and getting people to start really being a little bit more flexible and trying to create cultures that are that way that make it easier and some of the, some of the barriers to that we also know that there's these barriers if we have high levels of bureaucracy policies things that are supposed to help us but actually slow us down can actually have negative impacts on us so you know we have to be careful about how we structure our business that yes we want to mitigate risk we definitely want to mitigate risk construction is a risky business so we need to have rules right we need to have rules and we need to enforce those rules this is for sure but we need to make sure that those rules that we have are necessary like we have to sometimes in business we have rules that we put into place 20 years ago for something that was there because of fax machines. And then we still got these rules here and it doesn't make any sense anymore, but we still got them. And it's hindering our ability to do something. So we have to be very cautious about that. And at the same time, we've got innovation. And somewhere in there, somewhere in there, there's a sweet spot, right? Somewhere in there, there's a sweet spot where you've got the right amount of rules, policies and procedures, but you're not stifling innovation. It's 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 not easy. It's not easy. And so, you know, if you have so many systems in place that people just want to continue to do it the way they've always done it, that's not great. But systems that make you do things more easily with less thought that free up your mind to be more creative and innovative, that is a good thing. So there's a, it's this sweet spot in there that is difficult to obtain. The best of companies figure it out. The best of companies talk about it. The best of companies attempt it. The best of companies accept failure. The best of companies will reward people when they've actually failed, but then they figured things out and they've given them the opportunity to figure that out. Now, I'm not saying you have to fail uh, to succeed. But generally, people that have succeeded have failed a lot in their backgrounds. You know, I would say, you know, rarely do I see somebody that's at a high level of success that doesn't have scattered a bunch of failures. I know a lot of people that don't have that many failures, but they don't have great amounts of success either. So it's kind of like a, a mundane sort of uh, road. You have to be willing to try things. Now, in construction, we can definitely prototype things. We can definitely do mock-ups of things. We can definitely test things in a way that would be uh, not able to sink the ship, so to speak. So that's important. Uh, I, I think about this too, and you know, I've been talking about systems, so I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I'm very, I, be, I believe strongly in having good systems. Uh, and I really like this quote of, by James Clear, uh, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems, right? 
Your goal is your desired outcome. Your system is the collection of daily habits that will get you there. This year, spend less time focusing on outcomes and more time focusing on the habits that precede the results. I think another way of putting it is you can't rise to to the level of your ambitions uh, because if your systems are not up to snuff, you're not going to get there, right? You fall to the level of your systems. If your systems are high, it's going to help you get to a high level. And, you know, I see this. I see this in my uh, place of work. I see this in a, in a number of places, you know. Systems are very, I see this in myself, my own systems, you know, they all need improvement. They all need improvement. And so it's, it's definitely worthwhile in looking at that. So having a system doesn't mean it can never change. It means it should be changing where there's the right opportunity, right? Uh, but if you have that, and if you have basic things that you need to get done that you're not spending an inordinate amount of time, it frees up your mind to be more creative and innovative as well. Uh, so that's that's kind of a way of tricking things by developing really good systems and creating a culture that is open to change, right? The other thing here is, uh, this is a quote from the book Originals, which is all about creativity and how nonconformists move the world uh, by Adam Grant. Uh, the lesson here isn't to ask customers what they want as the famous line often attributed to Henry Ford goes. If I had, had my, if I had asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. Instead, creators ought to build a car and see if customers will drive it. That means identifying a potential need, designing what the lean startup author Eric Rice calls minimum viable product, testing different versions and gathering feedback. It's the same thing, you know, you can't learn construction from a textbook. Textbooks are good. I've written textbooks, but you can't learn construction from a textbook. You can get good ideas about things, but you've got to get out there and you've got to do it. You've got to try it. You've got to experiment. You've got to learn from people that have been there and you've got to find your own way. And if you're thinking very creatively in construction, it's all about creativity, problem solving. You know, if you can be very creative and innovative in solving problems, you're going to be very, very successful in this business, right? It could really, really help you um, looking at things from that perspective, right? Try something, see it, test it. What's the feedback on it? And so that, of course, gets to the often quoted uh, book that I've quoted many, many times in other videos and that everybody kind of falls back on too is Carol Dweck's work with a growth and fixed mindset. You know, fixed being I'm no good at in, I'm no good at creativity. I'm no good at innovation, right? I just do things. I'm not creative. I'm not innovative. And you know what? You're right. If that's the way you think, you are most likely correct. Uh, but a growth mindset might say I'm not good at it yet, but what are some of the things I can do? How can I better adapt to change? How can I adopt these things? How can I learn them better so I can be more innovative in applying them to my particular situation? Uh, that's important. So, you know, growth mindset, uh, it, it's honest. If you're not there yet, you have to admit that, but it's also yet, I can get there, right? And I think that a lot of businesses have operated with that as Fezziwig's in business operated that way fixed mindset. No, no, Mr. Jorgen, uh, we can't change our ways. Uh, you know, we'll have to die out with them. That's it. Fixed mindset. Perfect example. Fezziwig syndrome. Fezziwig syndrome. You know, that's not go there. That's not go there. I think of uh, Steve Martin recently. I was reading uh, something on, on him and I find he's very interesting character. You know, in the, well, for one, he doesn't seem to age. He looked like that in the 70s. But I mean, uh, you know, very creative comedian, uh, wrote this book, Born Standing Up. Uh, excellent book, just to get your mindset going. How did you get to be in the, in the 70s and 80s? He was like the top stand-up comedian uh, out there. And, you know, if you get a chance, watch Murders in the Building. Great show. Uh, plays this banjo, right? He plays it really, really well. And, you know, I just stayed with it. Like he started playing it. Uh, it wasn't 
this was he'd bring it into his act in certain places you know and i think in the beginning it was okay not so great and then he just got better and better at it because he stayed with it and he could tweak things he could adjust things right and be creative with it and eventually after you know well he just said i stay with it one day i'll have played for 40 years anybody who sticks with the banjo for 40 years will be able to play it and he ended up winning a grammy award on on uh for his playing of the banjo it's not fast you got to stick with things but stick with it and try to improve continuous improvement lean construction sort of thinking how do i continuously improve down this path right and that's i think something that is should be applauded and is more rare when you see it right and i think we can do that much much better in our industry lots of opportunities to do that better so my conclusion on this holiday edition, and I'm wishing everybody happy holidays here. Don't be resistant to change. Embrace change. Reframe it. Look at it differently. Don't see it as a threat. See it as an opportunity. Uh, build systems that encourage it, that gives you time to innovate and create, right? So you're looking at that. How can I be more innovative and creative? Uh, use it as an opportunity to grow, enjoy the journey. That's a big thing with systems thinking as opposed to just goals thinking. We've got a lot of new technologies coming and they're here and they're being widely adopted. But you know what? I think we're just touching the beginning of the iceberg with building information modeling and how we can use and implement it. Lean construction how we can use and implement it. New contract models, how we can collaborate and engage with each other. Much more innovative, creative ways of working together. There's so much knowledge in our industry, but we tend to be in silos. How do we cross those silos? So be creative and innovative. Don't settle whatever you do and don't fall victim to Fezziwig syndrome. Happy holidays, all the best. And if you enjoyed this, please click subscribe and we'll see you in uh, the new year or the, my next video probably before then. And have a wonderful day. Bye for now.